Hello folks, Jason Crispin here, Grazing Acres Farm. Today I want to talk about grass growth, dragging your pastures, and I want to reveal our new bull. But first, let's get started on this grass growth and dragging the pastures. If you look here behind me, you can see an area that I just ran the drag through. And what that drag does is it knocks down all the remaining weeds, anything the cattle had no interest in, spreads out the cow patties, and it allows sun to get down to the ground now so that the grass can grow. Now, I realize, looking here, you can't tell what was standing and what's been eaten. So I want to give you a good idea what that looked like just minutes ago. You see this area here? The real tall, thick weeds. You got the ironweed, the purple top thing there. Um, the rest of it is goldenrod. You got some briars mixed in here. Some brambles. So what I want to do, you know, it's the middle of August. I've got a good two months, maybe two and a half months yet to grow some grass. The cows aren't going to have any interest in this goldenrod when we come back. They didn't have any interest in it this time. So in order to get some grass growth, I have to get the sun down where the grass is, down at the ground level. So if you look over here, this is an area I just ran the drag across in the last few minutes. It's knocked all that down. Now what's gonna happen is a lot of it's gonna die off because when it gets this mature and you bend it over, what happens is it snaps. Hear that? You're cracking the stem. Therefore, it can't get any more water. And if you look at the ironweed, it's already starting to die out anyway. This purple top bloom, it's done its job. It's done now. So it's on its way out anyway. The goldenrod, a little bit more resilient. But for the most part, a lot of it will stay down. Some will still come back up. Like if you look right here, here's a couple goldenrod plants that came back up. But that's not going to be enough to keep the sun from getting down to the ground. Another big benefit to dragging your pastures is all this stuff that stays on the ground, that feeds the microbes, creates organic matter, helps hold the rain, and keeps it from running off of your land and onto your neighbor or down into the creek or into the valley, whatever it may be. Now sure, you could mow, brush hog your pastures and get a very similar result. You're still gonna get the grass growth. What you're not going to do is you're not going to spread out the manure patties, which are going to cover more of the area. They're also going to, when you spread out the patties, you're also going to drop the fly population because now all the fly larvae that was in that patty has been spread out. Today's sun's going to dry it up and kill it. So it's greatly going to help with the fly population. And another big thing is is when you take some organic matter like I've pushed down here on the ground and you run this through your mower, it chips it up really fine. And that's good, there's nothing wrong with that. The bad side to that is, is those smaller pieces break down quicker. Therefore, the microbes don't get to eat as long. These bigger pieces take longer to break down and it's an, it acts as an extended food source for the microbes. So in my opinion, dragging is actually a little bit better than mowing. It's definitely cheaper. I don't need a tractor. I just need my ATV and this old 10 or 12 foot gate. Now personally, um, this drag does work, works very well. It's got a piece of cattle panel on the bottom. Um, got some steel cable. Running back to my hitch. And I got some logs through on it for weight. The downside to it is it's just a, a lot for the ATV to drag up and down these hills like we have here. So I try and go across them to reduce the pulling on the ATV. Now it was kind of my preference to use something six to eight foot wide, but since I do custom grazing, um, the guy that pays me to manage his cattle, 
Um, don't want me to put a whole lot of hours into it. So he brought me this. I don't argue. I do what I'm told. And I use this bigger one. But I really think the smaller one did a better job of knocking down more weeds. And it was a lot less uh, work for the ATV. Now granted this is a Sportsman 500 4x4. And right now it is in four wheel drive. Then that's just simply because the grass is wet this morning. Last night when I was up here dra uh, dragging, grass was dry, two wheel drive was sufficient. So you don't need anything fancy to drag around. You probably got it around your own property. You just need to throw something together and get out there and do it. You know, a lot of people kind of wonder why do the farmers mow down all those pollinator plants? Well, it's not that they have anything against pollinators by any means. As a lot of you know, I'm a beekeeper. And uh, I rely a lot on wildflowers for my bees to have food. And there is a great deal of goldenrod that's going to produce a lot of last choice or last chance nectar for the bees. But at the same time, I'm a beef farmer. I've got my own cattle besides the cattle that I raise or manage. And, uh, you know, I want them to have food, too. So it's just what I have to do. I have to go through here and drag down these pollinator plants so that my cows have a source of food. Now, on the outside of the fence, we don't do anything out there. That's all free range for the bees and the butterflies and the pollinators. So that's just how that works. So right now, I'm going to take advantage of it and get as much of this knocked down as I can. It's simply amazing what dragging can do in a couple months time. Well, actually, by the time you're dragging, you're going to see a huge difference. But you come back in 35, 40 days and look at your grass growth. I guarantee you, you're going to be impressed. I mean, if you look over here on the other side of this poly wire, the cattle aren't in that paddock. So there are actually like five paddocks over now. They've already been through there. They've got everything out of there that they want. Lots of dragging. This one pasture alone is 25 acres. All right, folks. So that's that's my uh, that's my two cents on dragging and how I feel, and I have definitely seen results with it. Now, what I would like to do is introduce you to our new bull. Check him out. He's been here a couple days. All right here he is. We can get this old girl to step forward. Good looking boy. Took a little bit to get him back here with the herd because we're not, the herd isn't close to the front of the farm. Um, we tried to use a cow that we had up front to walk him back, but it was like the blind leading the blind. So it took a little bit to get him back here. And I haven't actually seen him breed anybody yet. But let me tell you, this young man right here, he's checking every few minutes. He goes around to each lady, gives them a good whiff to see where things stand. And get that calf to step out of the way you'd have a better look at it but calf seems to be content eating breakfast and the bull he's hard at work he's checking out the ladies this morning make sure nobody's going to have a heat today and if you're new to cattle and breeding this is how it works you pretty much watch for this and when you see one that is in heat the bull's going to stay with that one until standing heat starts and when standing heat starts that's when the breeding will begin there's a small small window there so in the last couple days we've gained a couple low-lying calves i don't see any right here close but everything was very very successful there which i am glad to see But I just wanted to take a couple minutes this morning and share our new bull with you. Now, if you look right there next to the bull, what do you see? Yup, goldenrod. A sign of autumn. It's coming. It's a coming. Cold weather's coming, big guy. Thanks for watching Grazing Acres Farm. And if you like my new bull, make sure you throw me a thumbs up. Thanks.